And then next Thursday, we'll be shutting a little bit early, closing uh, lunchtime, uh, so that there is plenty of time for you to meet the teachers and ask them, you know, do you think it would be good if, um, you know, my son, my daughter, a child would be suited to take your subject? What's your views on that? The deadline we've set for getting those options forms in is the 7th of March. So um, that means that's deliberate. That means there's half term for the students to kind of take a step back from the daily routine of school, think, then they've got a week after half term to hand in their op options forms, which their tutors will give them, which lists their top four and then their preference if they had to pick a fifth, just in case for timetabling reasons, they couldn't quite squeeze the four in. So next steps are, as a year nine, if you're listening, think through which choices are the ones that appeal to you. And it has to be for you. you know, it's got to be you pick what you want. Talk to your teachers, talk to the tutor. Uh, you can talk to careers advisor. Um, the careers advisor will be available at parents' evening. So um, Ms. Taylor, um, she'll be available next Thursday if you want an appointment with them, or you can go to student services and ask for an appointment. Talk to your 10s, talk to your 11s, cousins, sisters, brothers. Um, you know, find out what they went through, how they came to an answer. And obviously talk to ourselves as adults, teachers, parents, carers, aunties, uncles, just to get an idea and, you know, really process as much as possible what the right thing for you personally is. So we've got a couple of FAQs. Uh, then I'm going to play you a quick video of some year 10s talking through their subjects. And then I'll answer some of the questions that have come through to Mr. Handley. Uh, so first one is a very simple question to answer. Do you get to choose which teachers you will get? I'm afraid not. Much as I'm sure we would love to pick our four favourite teachers, uh, we don't allow that to happen. So that's why it's important you pick the subject that's right, not the teacher. If you do triple science, will you get an extra option choice? No, triple science counts as one of your four options. Um, so that's the case if you choose triple science. Why is it you may not get one of the four that you've put down? Why do we ask you for a reserve? Uh, I'm sure you can appreciate we do our best to meet the needs of everyone in the year nine uh, year group. But sometimes there may be subjects that very, very few students take, maybe one or two students take, and we decide it's not really economical to run them. And we also have to work out which subjects will run at the same time. So which subjects will be taught at the same time? So, for instance, um, this morning I taught my year nine science lesson, which was brilliant. Um, but if I'm teaching a year nine science lesson with my brilliant year nines, what that means is if that was, say, a GCSE option, there will be other GCSE options being taught at that same time. So if I was teaching, say, triple science to my year nines in year 10, uh, there might be photography being taught at the same time. There might be construction. There might be French. There might be geography. There might be history. If you've chosen all four of those subjects, it's unlikely, um, but if you've chosen all four of those subjects, it may be we can't meet your exact choices. It's very few students usually that this is the case for, and we almost always are able to give them their reserve choice. Uh, I like sport. I like sport too. I'm not sure whether to do PE or BTEC sport, or I like computers. I'm not great with computers but I'm not sure whether to pick computer science or iMedia. How do I choose? Well, generally speaking, the major difference is if you want to take the GCSE, that's going to have a slightly bigger exam element. So if you feel like you're a bit better at kind of exams and the writing side of things, uh, learning, memorizing, take that subject. If you're a bit better at a more vocational subject, so uh, more coursework, slightly less exam, iMedia or PE BTEC, BTEC Sport is a better option. Computer science or computing features programming is another difference as well as iMedia doesn't. Are GCSEs getting harder? Difficult question to answer. Um, I think the, the government would argue that because of the change in the grade spreads, um, you know, actually GCSEs should be roughly as difficult. Um, I would say, generally speaking, there is slightly more content in GCSEs to memorise. 
However, you are competing against everyone your age in the year group um, across the country. And the results will be spread out on a kind of a bell curve for a maths term there. It's kind of normal distribution of grades. That was the case when I went to school. It was the case when I began teaching quite a while ago. Um, so that's still the case. So actually, the perception that GCSEs are getting harder, I think, is quite true because you are still competing against people your age across the country. Are GCSEs worth more than the other qualifications? No, it's all about that there's equal weighting. It's all about just picking the things that are right for you. Now, obviously, if you were desperately keen to maybe go on and take history and go and do history at A-level, do history GCSE. Um, but, you know, ultimately, those qualifications are of equal weighting, of equal standing. And it's about the right qualification for the student, for your child. Do you have more chance of getting your options that you want if you get your form in early or if you offer me an apple or tell me that you think I'm a great teacher? No, I'm afraid not. You're welcome to give me apples um, and tell me you find my lessons absolutely rivetingly interesting. Um, but no, it will be completely fair. There's no chance of um, one student getting advantage compared to the other. The only caveat will be after the deadline, once the deadline has passed, if you are then deciding you want to change, so in September you want to change, it's then much less likely that you'll get the options exactly that you want if you're changing, but we'll try. Which brings me on to question eight, the final of the FAQs. Can you change your mind after you've handed your form in? Technically, yes. Um, it, it's not impossible for you to change your mind, but it is quite tricky. Um, so it's not final. We can make changes in September. But it would be a lot easier if you kind of focus on the ones that you definitely want to do now. Um, and that will kind of the more effort and time you put into the process now, it will mean you're in the subject you want to be in. And once you're in that subject, that's it. You're then kind of locked in. That place is yours forever. Um, so, yeah, uh, a couple of other bits. So there is other support. Um, there is Miss Todd, who works in our um, AEN or SEN uh, department that you can see. Uh, and there's Mrs. Taylor, who's our careers advisor um, that you can see. So if you are, if you have a child who's got additional needs and you want to speak about that or you want to look into certain careers, uh, you're welcome to speak about that. Um, so there's a bit of support there. If you go to the school website, click curriculum and then click key stage four curriculum and then key stage four curriculum evening. And what you can see there is an electronic copy of our Key Stage 4 curriculum booklet. There will be the presentation available. Um, it will take us a few hours to get that up there. And I can reassure you, it will not be me putting it up, that will actually go up. Uh, and then what we've also got is videos from all the different subjects here that you may wish to look at taking um, from their teachers just to talk about the subjects. Uh, we're doing that because obviously in real life, you'd be able to go and speak to the teachers themselves. But um, given that isn't the case, we figured this was probably the second best uh, that we could do. So you're welcome to go straight to that uh, and crack on with that. And we'll be back online at 10 to 6. But we're also going to stay here now for about 10 minutes, um, just answering all the different questions that have been asked. So I hope that's been helpful. Um, one last bit of housekeeping is just to remind you of the email system in case you wanted to contact myself or one of the teachers. So it's capital R, capital A, capital S, hyphen, uh, first letter of your first name. So mine is A for Angus, full stop, Harrison, which is the surname, at ralphallenschool.com. So if you come up with questions in the next few days, Find me an email and that's fine. I'm very happy to contact you back. Uh, and I've said to the year nines when I'm on duty with them, which I frequently am two or three times a week, just come up to me and talk to me if there's anything that isn't clear or anything you want clarity on. OK, uh, feel free to stay and we'll go through some of the questions that have been submitted uh, or to log back on at 10 to 6 if there's a few more questions you want to ask then. Thank you very much. I hope it was helpful. Yeah, I'll, I'll pass over to Mr. Greenoff for a change of uh, change of voice for the first question. Hello, good evening. Uh, I'll just a few questions here for me. First is, um, do we pick a reserve for every option subject or just a single reserve? It's just one reserve that you'll pick across 
the majority of the people, normally we can get their, uh, the, the options that they chose, but that just gives us some flexibility and help. What is the maximum number of GCSEs a student can do? So what there'll be is you'll end up with nine GCSEs. There is one um, after school additional maths uh, that sometimes some students study after school and take that, which would be 10, but normally for everyone, it's nine. Is there a grace period in year 10 where you can drop swap subjects with a small window? Does that make sense? I understand when you tie them, it might not be what you thought it was. Um, so we normally go about two or three weeks, but after that, it means that they've too much work's gone by and it's hard uh, to then catch up. So there is a grace period for some, if that helps. Do PE and construction have practical exams for GCSEs? So with PE, there is a practical element where you have to choose three sports, uh, and that makes part of your um, coursework. Uh, in construction, it's actually done as a, a BTEC, and it's all practical. So for instance, we've just built, uh, we just plumbed in sinks, they've done woodworking skills and built things, and we're going to do a bit of brick laying. So all that uh, is practical that they do, but then that's filled in um, in like a, a form and photographic evidence of what they've done to do it. But there's no main exam at the end of the semester. Okay. I'll hand back to Mr. Harrison now. Thank you. Um, okay, a few that I'll run through here. Uh, so uh, first one is, when will we hear confirmation of choices made? Um, as soon as we've got that, we'll get it out, but I can't give you, a, I don't really want to commit to a date because it will depend slightly on how easy or hard it is to write all the different timetabling bits in. And obviously sometimes there are slight staffing things. So um, I would, I mean, before the end of the year, obviously, but um, you know, I, I can't give a finite date to that. I'm really sorry. Uh, but as soon as we've got it, we'll obviously let students know. Uh, I've got, can students select extended maths in addition to core maths? Um, I think there is a, a small number of students that the maths department do offer um, an extra bit of maths to, um, but it, I don't think it's one of your selections. So I think it's best to speak with your maths teacher next week uh, or Mr. McKenna, head of maths, and, and he will advise you whether uh, that's a good option for your child. Can my child do uh, French and history? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, no problem at all. You can do French and history. Uh, those are not two options that you have to pick just one of. So French and history is no problem at all. Uh, does a second humanities subject count as one of the four options? Yes, it does. Um, so if you took history and then you took geography, uh, then uh, those are counting as your two of your four options. Are there restrictions on certain combinations? Um, very few, um, but yeah, there is a very small restriction um, which is to do with uh, just because of the timetabling and the number of uh, teachers that we have. So we'd ask um, students to take at least one of the languages or history or geography, as long as you've selected one of those. Um, other than that, there's no restrictions. Uh, which is similar to, is it possible to do any combination of GCSEs? As long as you meet that criteria, um, then yes, that's absolutely fine uh, for you to, uh, to pick any other combo. Are you able to pick more than four of the non-core subjects? Generally speaking, no. There are very few uh, exceptions. So it might be a situation like um, potentially uh, you are completely fluent in a language and you speak to us and uh, we may potentially um, look into that. But generally speaking, we, we aren't able to facilitate um, anything more than just those four. Um, just to do with staffing constraints, uh, which fits in with someone who's asked that uh, their, their son is bilingual and speaks German. Um, we have looked into this. It's very difficult for us, especially because of the nature of the languages GCSE and that they've got to do a speaking assessment and a listening assessment. So um, I would say it's very unlikely, but you're welcome to come and talk to me, but it's fairly unlikely. Um, so I'll leave you with uh, the website for 20 minutes or so. And then if uh, more questions have appeared, um, please do you know, log back on and, and enter them uh, and I'll answer them then. Other than that, have a, uh, have a wonderful evening.